Russian troops are retreating on two fronts in Ukraine as the Ukrainian forces advance their counteroffensives, both in the north east and down in the south. Now they're closing in on a key city in the south as President Biden is pledging more military assistance to Ukraine. ABC News' Britt Clinton and ABC News' senior national security and defense analyst Mick Mulroy joins us now with the latest. Britt, first, uh, Ukrainian troops, uh, they're advancing rapidly with the, this new offensive being fueled in part by captured Russian weapons. Uh, somebody did the math and Russia is apparently the second largest uh, provider of weapons to the Ukrainian forces because they're capturing so much of them. That's happening in the south. Well, what's the latest on Ukraine recovering territory down there? Right. Well, as you say, Terry, there have been reports uh, that these Ukrainian breakthroughs are being partially helped by captured or, or even abandoned weapons, you know, Russian tanks, howitzers and, and fighting vehicles too. But really, you know, you mentioned about the, the HIMARS, the weaponry that's being sent from the U.S. That's having a real impact. That's helping uh, those HIMARS are helping to strike deep into occupied territory. You know, they can strike targets like army depots and command centers deep into, uh, into Russian territory. Uh, Russian-held territory, I should say, with accuracy. You know, they're helping Ukraine press forward with this remarkable uh, gain, these advancements that we're seeing in the south and east, uh, freeing dozens of towns from Russian occupation, you know. And earlier we spoke to the governor of Kherson this morning and, and they he told us that uh, Ukrainian, she told us, I should say, that Ukrainian troops are less than 35 miles from the regional capital. Now, taking that city would deal another huge blow to Putin's campaign, just as he signs laws to formally annex four regions in Ukraine, including Kherson. Now, Kherson is of huge strategic importance. It's the only connection to Russia from Crimea. So these advances, Terry, are very important for Ukraine. Uh, thank you, Britt. And they're striking. Mick, what's going on? I mean, first, first in the Northeast, you saw that uh, re remarkable advance by the Ukrainians and the collapse of the Russian line up outside of Kharkiv uh, and beyond. And now down in the south near Kherson, as Britt was just saying, what is the Russian military effort kind of crumbling here or is it the, ex the expertise and spirit of the Ukrainians? How do you read what's happening? So, Terry, although this is far from over, I think what you just said is accurate. I think we are seeing the crumbling of the Russian chain of command. Essentially, when you withdraw orderly, you don't leave. A lot of weapons and equipment. The fact that they are that the Ukrainians are recovering a lot of Russian equipment means that they are essentially no discipline and it's completely dis disorderly. On the Ukrainian side, this shows that they can not only conduct a counteroffensive in one uh, area of their operations, but two very complex um, counteroffensives in the north and the south that are that are successful, and that really shows that they have the initiative and they are out fighting the Russians. I mean, it's just it's staggering to, to think uh, that a country of 40 million is taking on uh, an invasion by one of the world's largest military powers, 120 million or whatever it is. Now, Putin has called up these 300,000 new soldiers, this mobilization, this draft of 300,000 new soldiers. Uh, how much of a difference can that make? How fast can he get them there, uh, Mick? And how much of a difference can it make, do you think? So I don't think it will have near the difference uh, that President Putin hopes. Uh, they're largely untrained, uh, and that is compared to the troops that are currently in U Ukraine, which are supposedly trained, but really are not. So I think it was smart by the Ukrainians to put out immediately that any Russian soldier that's forced to fight in Ukraine can surrender, and that surrender will be accepted. This might be all for naught. And quite frankly, it certainly caused a lot of political pressure back home uh, against Putin for, for doing this. So I think it might backfire. There'll be more bodies in the fight, but those bodies aren't trained. And obviously right now, the Russian officers cannot control uh, the soldiers that are currently there. I, I, it just every day brings a headline that just is, is head shaking. And Britt, you've spent a lot of time there. What's the mood there as these, as, as these advances on two fronts seem to have such success? How are people feeling? And yet the terrible losses that Ukraine has suffered. 
Look, I think that morale is is reasonably high here, especially with those advancements that we're seeing in the South uh, and the East. We're talking about um, a kind of feeling that Ukraine has momentum on its side, you know, while for Russia, there's humiliation. You know, his army reportedly in disarray as criticism of his war grows at home. You know, Russians are on the back foot now. Uh, you know, it's admitted it's regrouping and that they will strike back. Clearly, Putin is not going to throw in the towel. Um, um, you know, what does it what does he do now? That's the big question when he's embarrassed. This war is a, a, a dangerous precipice and that feeling that mood is reflected uh, here as well. But as I say, morale uh, is high and, and it, there's a sense that m momentum is on the Ukrainian side. It, it's it is remarkable. David seems to be beating Goliath. That may be what we're watching here. We'll see. Britt and Mick, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.